It's about 14 minutes after 6 on the Sunday morning. A very good morning if you've just joined us. We're still leading with a couple of stories, including this one. Western Cape residents are being urged to drive cautiously this weekend. The province has been battered by heavy downpours over the past few days. And the weather service has warned of more rain. One person was seriously injured and several thousand have been left homeless. For an update this morning, we are joined by Colin Dana from, uh, Dana rather, from Western Cape Disaster Management. Colin, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. In terms of just, you know, numbers of people who have been affected by this, what are we looking at? Good, good morning, uh, Morena. Yeah, um, so unfortunately we've had two fatalities yesterday during the day. Um, one was a person that tried to cross the river, a river in the Overberg that was swept away. And then we also lost somebody uh, in Friedendal uh, later yesterday uh, in, in their house, a 64-year-old uh, gentleman who, who passed away because of the flooding. Uh, and then I think as far as affected people, if we look at just in the city of Cape Town alone, around 4,000 people have been affected, mostly in informal settlements. And then across the province, Further up, and specifically on the west coast uh, and in the Rawsonville area, we've seen around 2,000 people affected. Uh, we've had to do a couple of evacuations, but they've mostly been precautionary evacuations where water has come through and we've allowed people to return uh, to their houses. Well, how are you uh, faring when it comes to resources, Colin? I mean, this is not an easy um, kind of you know, evacuation and, and assistance for people. It requires some significant resources and consistent resources for that matter. I was seeing a couple of pictures actually of some of the guys that are at work there and there's a lot of work that is, in, that is actually entailed here. So from a resourcing perspective, how are you faring? Yeah, Faith, what we do is obviously we get these warnings early on from the weather services. So there's two things. The one is that we, we have a lot of, uh, of uh, partners and obviously the, the provincial departments, the national departments, we get them in in advance of an event like this taking place and do a lot of planning. I mean, you know, the Western Cape does get floods this time of the year, not as, as many as what we, we, we're seeing at the moment or as severe. But what we do is we do a lot of planning. We do a lot of pre-positioning of our resources. And uh, so that helps a lot because when you've got people responding quickly and being able to get to places, that's very, uh, that's very helpful. And then secondly, partnerships. You know, we have partnerships with a number of organizations I can mention, you know, we, we're aware of the work Gift of the Givers are doing. We have an organization called SARSA, which are off-road rescue specialists um, that we make use of. Uh, the National Sea Rescue Institute involves themselves. So we have a very, very big grouping. And then obviously, you know, we help each other. So City of Cape Town would send rescue responders, for example, into the West Coast. Um, we would call uh, for resources from areas that are not so badly affected. There's a lot of organization that has to take place. Also not forgetting the South African Defense Force, which have provided us with helicopters as well. Talk to us about infrastructural uh, damage, uh, Colin. Just how bad is it? Because we're seeing just now visuals of you know, a road that essentially mm -hmm. is, cannot be driven on because it has been so battered uh, by, 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 by these floods. How bad is the infrastructure at the moment? Yeah, the infrastructure damage is quite significant. We've not started with assessments yet. You know, that all that comes in the next phase. At the moment, with the fourth phase still, the fourth uh, uh, cold front still to come in, we're still very much in the acute phase. But, you know, a couple of towns, for example, Citrusdal was cut off uh, for, a, you know, for a couple of days. We only managed to reach Citrusdal yesterday, and that was through a lot of work done by our infrastructure department at the province to identify a bridge uh, Sazo was able to help us get the gift of the givers trucks in. So, you know, we're identifying infrastructure now for emergency repairs. And then we're also identifying infrastructure that we need to reach people. It's been very extensive, uh, you know, bridges, low water bridges. We've seen quite a lot of damage to property and especially agricultural property. Uh, so what we've tried to do there is working with Agri Western Cape and working with our Department of Agriculture. We've done a lot of warnings and we've asked farmers to prepare you know, move uh, equipment, et cetera. So I think we're gonna see a significant amount when we start our assessments, which will probably start around Monday, Tuesday, and, and that will guide us as to how we go with funding to improve that going forward. 
Colin, let's talk a little bit about what happens to those that have been displaced, you know, uh, those that have been moved from their homes. Um, have they, I mean, you're speaking about the partners, but do we have like churches and specific infrastructure where they get taken to, where there is a warm meal? And I can't imagine what, you know, what must feel like to actually have to move within the rain and the cold. You need a place of safety and warmth with food, consistent food and supplies and water for that matter, especially when it comes to children. How are we doing there? Um, you know, do we have specific spaces where they get sent to those especially that have been displaced by the floods? Yes, so it's 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 quite a it's quite a lot of stuff that, that has to happen. I mean, firstly, uh, that is the responsibility of social development and and SASA. Uh, what they do is they come in, uh, they start getting uh, uh, numbers from municipalities. The municipalities assist greatly with, and they normally have their own networks of churches, etc. They all come in. Um, of course, we the NGOs come in, and, and again, as I said, you know, in, they they play an absolutely critical role up front. Um, bringing in food, bringing in blankets. Sasa, for example, provides meals, and people are then moved in. People are sometimes very reluctant to move, so you really have to be a hundred percent sure that you need to move people. You know, evacuation should never be done lightly. Oh. And what we then do is we move them into into these areas. Sometimes it's precautionary, like we did in in, in Friedendal and in Klawa, and then hopefully you can move people back fairly soon. If it's obviously extensive damage, then that means that people have to stay, you know, for a longer period. But we really do rely on the municipalities and all the other role players to come in and assist us there. Colin, we'll leave it there with you. Thank you so much. And I think I speak on behalf of a lot of South Africans when I say uh, we commend you for all the work that you guys are doing. And can, we can only but hope that you still manage to handle this process so that lives are not lost and more people um, are not affected. But we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us here on the South African Morning. That is Colin Diner from the Western Cape Disaster Management.